Hey, you guys. Hopefully, I'm done sneezing. Um, oh, allergies. And it's worse around this time when it's like hot and cold, hot and cold. So, I want to show you and do a little flip through of this little TN that I made. Um, I made this super quick. I did not sew it. Um, I hot glued it. I was able to hot glue it because the material that I use, the faux leather, the inside of the faux leather, the material was like um, almost a little felty. So the glue really got in there and it stuck good. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do a walkthrough of this. This is, I call this my promise TN. It's, it's a faith notebook. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that and, um, what's in there. But I want to start off with a couple of testimonies and these things have happened ever since I made that video and I talked about, um, the Lord put on my heart about getting back to the, to the, to the, um, getting back to prayer, getting back to intercession, getting back to warfare, getting back to the prayer closet. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word getting back to the prayer closet and me and Rocky have been putting that into practice. And we've also really been putting into practice. Um, and it's not easy. But we've been putting into practice faith over fear. So when you go through a lot continuously, it could cause you to have sort of like a PTSD. It could cause you to be fearful. It could cause you to think, oh, what's next? Um, but... That's what fear says. But faith says, I don't know how God's going to fix this, fix this, but I trust that he's going to. Easter Sunday, about 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, we were in bed and we heard this, da, 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 It literally, to me, sounded like somebody was beating down our door. And it was scary. And we got up, and we're half asleep, so we can't even think. Um, and we smell like this smoking smell. Um, we think it's our oven, because our oven is, like, under, right under the oven is where the fucking sound is coming from. We unplug the oven. No, plug it back in. Rocky goes down, checks the heater. It's the heater. It's literally, like, thumping. And so we, we shut it off. And our first reaction was like, oh, God, what are we going to do? But then I just told God, say, go pray. Go pray. Go put into action what, I, what I'm teaching you. Go in there and worship me. I know it's hard. I know you're scared. Because, like, you have to understand. My biggest fear in the past two years, ever since the last time I heater quit, it was horrible. It was so bad. It was in the middle of winter. And... It costs a lot to fix it, and ain't nobody got that kind of money to fix. So when this happened, I thought a belt came off. Um, and this being, like, my biggest fear, like, I'm afraid of that more than I am of snakes. And y'all know how much I hate snakes. Um, and so we turn it off, and we go in, and we worship, and... This peace just comes over me. And I know it's God. Because this is the thing I'm afraid of the most. And it's happening. And um, and I just have this, this, this absolute peace. And I'm telling Rocky, it's going to be okay. God is going to fix this. And our warfare right now isn't telling off the enemy. Our warfare right now is our worship. So that's what we did. Through tears in our eyes, saying, God, I'm doing my best to trust you. And we just, we didn't have a lot because we've been through so much. We didn't have a lot of faith at that time, but it just takes a mustard seed. And we just worship God. And then we... 
got all our thick blankets because it was 32 degrees. Got all our thick blankets and we covered up. And we sleep for like another two hours. And then Rocky wakes up and he's having some, some problems, some serious problems. And so, and this is Easter morning. And so we call my mom and tell her we're not going to be there for Easter. You know, Rocky's having some problems. We need to go into the emergency room. And then I need to talk to my dad. And I told my dad, I think, I told him what the heater did. And I think it was the belt. So we go to the hospital. We ran around. There's so many people that they're they're taking care of him in the waiting room. They put the IV in and all the stuff in the waiting room. And they contacted the doctors and they did nothing. Nothing. They didn't do a CAT scan. They didn't... Um, they did nothing. And this was, you know, a serious issue. <clears throat> and they just sent us home with some topical cream when the thing that was happening was happening inside his body. But they sent him home with, like, some baby rash stuff. It... So, we're like, you know what? We call it, so the, the doctor's like... I want to see you sooner than later. We call in. The soonest day he can get in is the 19th. So we're like, okay, Jesus, we trust you. We saw. I'll explain. I'll explain how God healed. Or what happened with our heater. But we're like, okay, God. We trust you. And we're just going to get him. We're just going to pray about it same time I'm getting sick I'm my sinuses and my asthma um I still have a little bit of that but with God's healing that so we go to my mom and dad's house because I'm at least gonna give you some ham and potato salad okay I couldn't eat Easter with my family but I'm at least gonna go and and I call my mom and dad I'm like is there still you know macaroni or potato salad left and I was like I made potato salad this time yeah there's still some left there's still just come get it so we did we went and got it my mom had made me a pie which she does every Easter and I tell my dad about it and he was like okay no my dad has been very sick fourth stage liver um, failure fourth stage kidney failure um, diabetes, a bunch of other things, but like, he's been doing better lately, and I oh, praise God. So, <clears throat> my dad hasn't been able to come to my house to fix anything in a long time because of his being sick. But he's like, Joe, I'll be over and and I'll look at it. And so, like, there's another praise report right there. My dad's feeling good enough. To come to my house, this man has not left his couch in two years. Done nothing. Left, gone, done anything. In this past six months, he's gone out to eat with my mom. He's like gone to he's gone places with my mom. He's doing things. He's gone across the 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 road and visiting my with my brother. And I'm just like, thank you, Jesus, because I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctors say. You are God. So, next day, very next day, and usually that doesn't happen with us. Like, my my brother is really good about coming out here and helping us, but he's got a family, he's got kids that he's raising by himself, and um, so usually we're kind of last on the list sometimes. But praise God, didn't God give us favor? And the next day, that morning, my dad and my brother... We're at our house. My dad's standing up and he looks good. And now, oh, I just, I wanted to cry then. Just, just, just the fact that my dad was here to look at it. I just wanted to, just thank God and cry. And I go downstairs and I'm like, you know, I said a belt. My dad's like, no, there was a snake cut in half. A snake tried to crawl in there to get warm. And it's, it got its head chopped off and the heater's cooking it. 
See, that's what you get for trying to come up in my house. You get your head cut off. That's what you get for trying to come up in my house, Satan. Uh, some people like snakes. Whatever. If that's your thing, whatever. I see a snake. I think it's Satan. I don't like them. They're nasty. So I'm like, that's what you get for coming up in my house. So not only, not only did my God defend me by keeping that snake from getting into anything or, or trying to come up in the house because we had that issue last year where one got in the house and I thought I was going to die. Anyways. So... My dad said, turn it on. Turn it on. Worked perfectly. There was nothing wrong with it. We smelled cooked sna snake for a little while. Smelled a little bit like chicken. And we smell it. And the more we just, we're just thanking God. And we're just praising him. Because it's like Easter Sunday. We thought, oh, this is going to be such a, a bad Easter. But thank God we have each other. No. No. Those tests turned out to be some amazing testimonies. That gave us the hope that we sorely needed. To say, okay God, I trust you. Look what you did. Look what, look how you proved yourself. You didn't have to prove yourself to us, but look what you did. Look what you did. And then, Rocky was still going through. One second, y'all. Rocky was still having his issues. Still going through. And every day is starting to get a little bit better. But it's like, it's scary because he still sees it. He still sees the problem. And God's like, it don't matter what you, doesn't matter what you see. Don't, don't go off of what you see or what you hear or what you feel right now. And that's what he's saying. And he's going to try to mess with you. He's going to try to get you in that cycle of fear again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just trust me. Just trust me. And three days go by. And Rocky, that situation that he should have been in the hospital for, is completely healed. This is a testimony of not only what prayer can do, because you know, I reached out to my people and I had them praying for me. So this is not only a testimony of what prayer can do, but this is a testimony of what worship can do. You you want to intercede or you want to you want a warfare? Warfare isn't all about tearing down and building up and pleading the blood and and all of these things, which that's a big part of warfare. But sometimes warfare is saying, "God, I trust you, and I'm gonna praise you," <clears throat> and you start reminding yourself of who God is, and you start reminding the enemy of who your God is and how you trust Him. You want on my lap. You start reminding, okay, well, get down. I, I don't know what you want, babe. She likes to get on my lap and move around and stand up. And it takes her five minutes to get comfortable. I'll hold you. As soon as this is done, I'll hold you, honey. <clears throat> so, no, I'm getting ready to, um, so... That is such a testament to what God is doing and, and how he answers worship and how he answers prayer and how he comes through. He will come through. And it's just, it's changing our mind. It's going from thinking, oh, what next? Oh, how are we going to deal with this? Oh, 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 to thinking, you know what? God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust you. I trust you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to make a way. I know you're going to give me a testimony. And then worship him. True worship. The most expensive worship that you can offer to God is the worship that you don't feel at the moment. Is the worship that's hard to give because you, you're in circumstance. It's the worship that you worship him in the middle of the storm. You worship him. It's like you worship him anyways. And God loves that kind of worship. 
and in three days all of those needs that arise, all of those things that came up, because we answered the circumstance with faith instead of fear, it was like bam, bam, bam. It does not always happen the way. Sometimes God makes us wait for a reason. Sometimes he makes us wait because he's stretching our faith. But sometimes it takes a long time for God to answer something because he's got to work through all the unbelief and all the doubt and all the anxiousness and all the fear. I'm telling y'all, fear is the biggest weapon of the enemy, one of them at least. Because fear will incapacitate you in a second. It will halt, bring a halt to your prayer life, bring a halt to your worship life, bring a halt to your time in the word. Anyways, I just wanted to give those testimonies. Plus, God completely healed my knee. Completely healed my knee. I still have a little tenderness, but I could get up and I could walk around because for like a month, I couldn't put no weight on my leg. I had to sit with a pillow under my leg. I had to do all these things. And, and I had to sit and watch housework build up like rocky to care a lot of things but there's things that I, you know, I like to do and God just like got a sick okay so when I was laying there and I'm starting to feel better and I'm starting to get a little bit more motivation I had this creative thought come in my head which was amazing because I had no creative Mojo, like my creative mojo was just gone, gone, and all of a sudden, I'm trying to think what day it was. Um, we went out in town Tuesday, so it was probably Monday. Monday, I had this idea for a face journal that I wanted to create. Now, like I have. I have a big, huge war binder that I use for praying. I have, like, other types of faith journals. But this one is specific. Not only that, but, like, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just weird. But I was craving a traveler's notebook. Like, I think the kind that I make isn't a normal one. Because I like mine a little extra tall and thin. this this is my size right here and I think this one is a little bit closer to a standard size maybe like that much shorter um but I like it this is the size that I like and so the cover is a faux croc leather I got it at Walmart. It's very thin, so I had to double it over, as you can see here at the bottom. Um, so I had to double it over to give it like enough thickness to actually hold something. I found this elastic at Walmart. I was so happy because it's a good elastic. Um, I also found. I also found. Leave your sister alone. I'm not doing the plate mediator right now. Sorry. Um, I also found this rainbow at Walmart. I have a little rainbow clip here at the top. And then I got my little crown at Walmart as well. I'm really th thrilled with the elastic that I found. Because I've never found this at Walmart before. Um, the pen that I have in here is a Friction 0.7 in black. And I put some of my favorite 
trim here at the side. And I put that there because there's a little bit of overhang. Um, and as it gets bigger, there's going to be more, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and I just like it. You know, some, some pink lace. I just, I just like it. Okay. Let me open it up. I'm going to try to show you this, this way. I will do a proper flip through once I get my desk cleaned off. But I just have this here because I really like this. And this just reminds me of like tea time with Jesus, you know. And all of the snacks and the cakes remind me of the scripture that talks about, you know, I, I will delight in the word of the Lord. Um, because that's how I like to think of God's word as, as, as just these delicious, you know, uh, but yet nutritious, um, um, lovely things that I love to just feast on. And then I have this, this cover was made for me by a girl named Iris. And then I just have these cute little sticky notes on here. Um, let me open it up. I'm starting to come up a little bit here. Let me grab a little bit of tape here. So the first section is a door. And this is where I write just love letters to the Lord. I just, um, the things that are in yellow are gratitude. It's like things that he's done for me. The things I just told you guys about. And it's just gratitude for that. And this is just a love letter to him um the next section and i did not write in this section yet because i knew i was going to do this video and this section will be will be private this next section says heart and this is going to be like my heart bump. this is when i have things that are on my heart that are weighing heavy on my heart or that i just want to talk to the lord about um this is where I'll go and put those things. There may also be some like prayer requests and things that will go in here. Just whatever is just weighing heavy on my heart. Things that I want to bring to the Lord. And then you have the other half of that dashboard. Then the next section is called Meditate. And this is where I will have scriptures um, that I want to meditate on or just thoughts towards God that I want, things that I want to meditate on and, and think about and chew on and just, um, because like I, I really believe that it's like that scripture in the, in the word that says all things lovely. Think on, these are the things that you should think on. I think one way of really combating anxiety and combating um, combating anxiety and depression is to fill my mind with good things. To fill my mind, to continuously think about all the good things that God has done for me. To continuously think on scriptures that just make me fall in love with Jesus all over again. Um, and that bring happy thoughts to me. And so that's why I have this meditate. Pika, leave your sister alone. She's going to smack you. You know she doesn't like it when you're up in her business. Go play. Here, there's a toy right there. Go get that toy. Sorry, y'all. Um... So the scriptures that I have in here is one that is really, it's not my favorite, but it speaks to me a lot. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And it's Psalms 139, 1 through 6. And 
I wrote it in kind of Christina ease where it's like I took the King James and I just moved it around a little bit so it's not exact. Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and you know my uprising. You understand all the thoughts, all of my thoughts afar off. You can pass me. You can, you can pass me. You are before me and behind me. You are well acquainted with my ways. There is not a word in my tongue that you do not, that you do not altogether know. You have beset me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. The idea that I am known by God. When I feel invisible or unseen, I know that God sees me. I know that God sees my heart and he sees my intentions and he sees my motives. I know he sees the reason behind the tears or the reason behind the smile. And I just wrote a little prayer that says, Lord, I am so thankful to be known by you. How wonderful to know that you are well acquainted with my ways. You know my words before I say them. Man, there's... N Nobody can know you more than God. Like, oftentimes, especially us women, will say, I don't feel seen, I don't feel heard, I don't feel known. But that's a lie. Because we are seen, and we are heard, and we are known by the God of all creation who created us and loves us with an everlasting love. And then my last section is notes. And there's nothing in there right now either. This is for when I listen to preachings or I listen to a podcast or I watch a YouTube video. And I hear something that's just like really touching or really inspiring or like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, or when the Lord gives me a download or teaches me something, gives me an understanding, that's a place where I can put that as well. So this is different than any other faith journal that I've, I've made with the exception of the adoration area. I always try to put a place for worship because... Worship is so important. It's so, so important. So, okay. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I really want to try. Um, because I was laid up for so long, uh, I don't have a lot of my energy. Um, so things are taking me like 10 times as long as I would like them to. Um, but as soon as, like, I'm going to try to work on it today, but as soon as I get my desk cleaned off and situated, um, I'm going to start doing videos on my desk with the camera facing my desk, and I'll do a better flip through of that and just talk about how I'm using it and how it's working for me. <clears throat> and I hope that this has blessed you. I hope it's encouraged you. Um, I hope that the testimony encourage you to keep the faith and to trust God no matter what it looks like or feels like or seems like. And that's not an easy task. That can be so difficult. Um, but God is so patient and he's so kind and he's so loving and willing to show himself and to prove himself worthy and uh, uh, he doesn't have to prove himself worthy, but he's so willing to prove himself as trustworthy. So, just taste and see that the Lord is good. Alright, God bless you guys.